All of the most famous bridges in the world are anchored to the earth in some way, practically speaking, because they can be. The bodies of water they span are all shallow enough to reach bedrock. In Seattle, Washington, that's not the case. Lake Washington, it separates Seattle from Bellevue, two of the Puget Sound region's most populous cities. But it's too deep for a suspension or a drawbridge, so in 1963 they created the Evergreen Point Floating Bridge. Here you see the original construction in 1963, and despite the inevitability of a replacement one day, it was still a big improvement, cutting commute times in half and increasing development in the once sleepy east side Seattle communities. But with 1950s technology and more than 50 years out in the elements, along with explosive growth population and cars on the road, the old bridge had to be replaced. The new SR520 floating bridge is dramatically different, both from a construction standpoint as well as the way it was engineered to carry up to 150,000 cars a day. So now we've got cars, we've got HOVs, which are high occupancy vehicles, we've got ride shares and buses. We also wanted to connect people who are riding their bicycles or pedestrians. So that's what this bridge does, it really connects two communities with each other. It is the largest floating bridge in the world, more than 1.4 miles from end to end. It now has six lanes rather than four, and with an eye to the future, it also will eventually be able to accommodate a light rail. As you might imagine, a project like this was a colossal undertaking, and NECA contractor DBE Electric was thrilled to play a role especially because of the programs put in place by the Federal Highway Administration to use small and minority-owned businesses on the project. DBE Electric is a certified DBE MBE company, meaning it's a minority business enterprise. Whether you're owned by women, and as in the case of mine, or um, and or a minority firm, it really allows that opportunity for a smaller firm to partner with a bigger firm. Having a project like this successfully completed gives me the opportunity to participate in pretty much any project here that I, I would like to. There's a lot of infrastructure to build out here and I feel confident with this on my resume that my company can go after and pursue those projects with the bigger builders. We ended up doing all of the electrical systems from the pontoons on up, which includes all of the vehicular lighting, the signaling, the conduit that runs across the bridge, all the wire, the electronic signs, the gantries, the permanent and temporary toll systems and infrastructure. I did a lot of work on the sign bridges and the street lights, and I did some work up in the box girder. I also worked a lot with the operators on setting uh, some of the heavier uh, gear. I really enjoyed this project. I wish we could do it again. I did the uh, permanent tolling, the temporary tolling, the VMSs, the illumination, and the ITS systems. Everything that you see that turns on out here, I pretty much had something to do with it. Saying that electricity and water don't mix is an understatement. And when you're running power across a floating bridge, you can imagine the list of challenges. I think some of the key challenges in replacing an old bridge that you have to maintain in service while you build a new bridge right next to it is really just the logistics of how you get all of the men and women equipment and material out to the structure, especially one that's a mile and a half long and floating. One of the bigger parts was running the conduits down the uh, pedestrian barriers so we could get cables from one end of the bridge to the other. I think it speaks to the diversity of the type of work our contractors can do. Whether it's a high profile project like this bridge, uh, or it's a stadium downtown, uh, or it's an office building, or a school, or even a residential area, uh, our contractors can, can do it all. As we were building this bridge, we talked a lot about individual responsibility of those working on the project. And by having uh, qualified, certified, and professional electricians that were provided by uh, Local 46 out here, by electrical subcontractors such as DBE Electric. We were able to get people that understood the importance of the quality, 
the workmanlike manner, the craftsmanship that was put into it. I think it's probably going to be the icon of my career uh, because it was such a, a large, fun project. I feel pride that I had a part of it, and I know it'll be here long after I am. This project is a great example of what can happen when a smaller company gets a chance to work with a great big company. And that partnership, uh, I'll never forget it. It was built for 75 years of service, and that's a long time. So this bridge will be able to not only carry us, but also our children. So it's really a bridge to the future. At the end of the day, for the NECA IBEW Powering America team here in Seattle, not only can they drive by a project they helped bring to a successful completion, they can drive on it. Well, that's it for this edition of ETV. Be sure to follow us on all of our social media accounts. For ETV on Lake Washington in Seattle, I'm Erica McClarity. For more information about the floating bridge, check out the February 2017 edition of Electrical Contractor Magazine. <laughs>